Let's keep talking about muscles. This time, the topic is muscle tissue, anatomical units or functional units. What do I mean by that? Well, we're used to thinking about muscles, right? Pec major, triceps, biceps, brachii, quadriceps, femoris. You can name hundreds of them, right? Muscles. Now, are those muscles that we name functional units? In other words, is that how we use our body functionally? Well, I'm going to distinguish between functional units with regard to muscle tissue and anatomical units. So all the named muscles in your body that you learn in school, etc., I'm going to call those anatomical units. By anatomical unit, I mean exactly what I mean. So anatomy means to cut up, right? The implication is with a knife. So anatomy, ana Tome. This is the knife part and this is the up part. So it literally means to knife up something. Okay, so when you're knifing up something, you do it where it works, right? You separate tissues where you can. And then you separate tissues the way your teacher told you to separate tissues. So what we have in our cutting conventions is basically the history of anatomy and the way that folks have historically divided up the body with a knife, and then named the parts that they made. Now, it's very random <laughs> and traditional that you would cut, for instance, I talked about the pec major in another video, that you would cut the pec major off as a group and call it the pectoralis major. Why is it random? Because, in fact, there are distinct muscle fasciculi, or a bundle that goes from the collarbone to the arm. Why don't we call that uh, clavicobrachialis muscle. And the part that goes from the sternum to the arm, we could call that sternobrachialis muscle. We could have cut it differently, is what I'm saying. Right? It doesn't change the way I behave, though, how I cut up the body. So all of these anatomical units are really conceptual projections onto the body that have little or nothing to do with how they function. So what do I mean by functional units? Now, you might be first not even able to hear about functional units because your brain is saying, did Gil just wipe out the entire history of anatomy and say it's kind of ridiculous and irrelevant? A tiny bit, but not ridiculous and not irrelevant because our anatomical units are a conceptualization of the body, a model that enables us to talk about it. So it's actually quite valuable, right, to divide up the body into bits and to have names so that if you ask someone to work on your pec major, they don't start working on your foot. Okay, so there's value in having a language that we share to describe the anatomical units of the body. However, if you want to understand how a body works, don't start there, right? Because, for instance, if you think the pec major ever works together, right, all at once. No, little fibers within it are working, along with little fibers all throughout the body, all at the same time we call them motor units. So a motor unit is actually a functional unit. A motor nerve partnership, meaning a motor nerve going to a muscle fiber, that's a functional unit, and its function is on or off. That's it. And so the pec major and all the muscles around it are comprised of motor units, which are never all on or off in a single named muscle. If it happens like that, we call that a Charlie horse. Your whole calf goes, oh, we call it a cramp when all the muscle motor units are firing at the same time. And it's highly dysfunctional, right? You can't walk. You can't lift your arm when you have a cramp. So a cramp is not functional is dysfunctional. So functional is when some of the motor units are on and some of the motor units are off throughout the whole layer. So for me to stand here talking to you, it's, it's an, an involvement of literally every motor unit in my body, on or off, in, in a beautiful chorus of on and off. So what makes the symphony of movement happen is that some are singing louder than others. Some are diminishing in their tone. Some are completely stopped. The, the bass have shut up while the tenors are singing, right? That's great. Or the sopranos are singing, the altos have stopped. So we have on and off all over the body, and that's what enables us to express our different emotions, 
right? So if I'm excited, ha ha, you know, I've turned off some motor units and turned on and, and turned on others and able to do this. If I'm depressed, I've turned on some motor units and I've turned off other motor units to do this. So the whole layer is expressing simultaneously through the on off nature of the motor unit. So functional units are either the whole layer considered as a human expression or the individual motor units, whereas the anatomical units are literally just cutting conventions. I think that's worth knowing because oftentimes we're looking at a book, we're learning the anatomical units, and then we're working on a person as if, as if they're a book, as if, they're, as if their function is dependent on the anatomical units. When it's not, it's dependent on the concert that's being performed by the whole body. Don't stop at the pec major if someone's having trouble with their arm. You have to work the whole cloud of relationships throughout the whole body. I cannot lift my arms here with my deltoid muscles. I have to adjust every muscle in my spinal column so that I don't tip over, right? I have to stabilize through my feet. All the motor units of the whole body make this functional movement possible. So anatomical units versus functional units. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your watching. Thanks for studying with me. If you'd like to learn more, visit me at gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.